I've just crossed from Michigan into Canada. I'm driving to Alaska solo. So you'd like to drive solo to Alaska. But there's a lot of things you need to think about before you decide to drive solo, preparations to get ready for the drive, and I hope this video will help you get ready to do just that. Stay tuned. I'm not completely alone. I do have my dog, Moose, who's sitting right next to me. He's busy working on an antler. Hey, buddy. Pussy. Hi. We're going to try to do this trip in about five days. It's about 800 miles a day. It can be a bit brutal, but I am all set up to camp in the back of my truck, and uh, it's going to be really comfortable. So. I can't lie, this is one of my favorite drives of all time. I've done this drive many, many times, but this time I'm going completely solo. We're going to start in Michigan and drive the Trans-Canada Highway all the way to the Alaska Highway and up to Alaska where I live in Alaska North Fairbanks. I'm driving a truck, pulling a trailer, I'm going to hope to flip when I get to Alaska to help pay for the trip. I love the rocks of Ontario. Oh, look at this view. Look at this beautiful place. Pancake Bay, Lake Superior. Walking Mr. Moosey is part of the deal. We stop a lot. So he can get out and stretch his little legs. This way, buddy. Back to the truck. This also happens. I get this guy on my lap. <laughs> Once in a while he likes to cuddle. I don't mind. A lot of times on our previous drives it's just been go, go, go. You get so tired, you pull over to the side of the road on a pull-off and you just kick back the seat, get a few Z's, and it's really tough going. So this time I am set up in the back of my truck so that any point that I need to get over and get some sleep. I can get into the back of my truck and get some real rest. I have this all set up for camping, so let me show you what that looks like. So tonight's forecast is calling for high winds, thunderstorms. It's just not a fun night to be on the road. It got really foggy. It's much darker than it looks in my camera. Hard to see, so... Um, I'm north of Terrence Bay between uh, Wawa and Thunder Bay and yeah found this little mom pop place that takes pets so Moose and I are going in. I completely set up the back of my truck so it would be comfortable to pull over and get some Z's. Now this is a futon and so I can open this up and lay it out. Both Moose and I can sleep in here. I've got my sleeping bag back behind the futon to pull out. And then I've got these shades that I deploy on all the windows to keep it nice and private in here. I've got a little stove. I've got a cooler. I also have a Jackery to uh, power my twinkly lights if I need them and charge my devices but most importantly i have a sawdust toilet right here so i don't need to worry about any rest stops or anything i can just use my sawdust toilet which is so so handy so i've got little shelves and everything i need is in here if you want to watch me build out this topper into a camper i'll put the link below to that video now let's talk about some of the essential tools and gear you're going to want to have along in case you get into any trouble on the road. Okay, back on the road, day two, heading towards Thunder Bay. Really thick fog this morning, more rain. I am ready for some sunshine, so hopefully, at some point today, we will drive out of this, so here we go. All right, so although I have a tire underneath uh, my truck ready to deploy. I'm actually bringing an extra one too. So I'm going to have two tires for my truck and I've got an extra tire for the trailer I'm bringing. I'm also bringing a five gallon container of gas just in case. 
You just never know when you might be too far between stops or late at night, something might be closed unexpectedly. So this may buy you some time. I am missing all of this beautiful scenery in Ontario. It is still raining, still thick fog. This is something you're gonna definitely wanna have along, some kind of way to inflate a tire. So you can either go with this, this type, which is the kind that you just plug into your cigarette lighter that works, or you can go with the old school bicycle pump. And those work just as well too. It's just gonna take a little more muscle, but you're definitely gonna wanna have some way to uh, pump up a tire. I am about a thousand miles into the trip. It's finally cleared up to be a nice day and I'm so happy to see the sunshine, although it makes me sleepy. Um, I'm looking for a place to pull off and get a good walk in, but uh, we'll see what we can find. So far, so good. This is beautiful. Hey, buddy. Okay. We have a beautiful lake here. Piece of rock that goes out into the water. There we go. Oh, it's so cool. to help pay for your trip. I'm pulling up this five by eight trailer. I just bought it new. I'm gonna put in some things that I wanna bring to Alaska, for instance. Um, I'm bringing up a propane fridge, a bed frame, some other miscellaneous things for our cabin in Alaska. And as soon as I get to Alaska, I'm gonna sell this. And I'm gonna hopefully help pay for my trip. This in Alaska is almost double the price I paid for it in Michigan. So if I pull it up there, I'm gonna be able to flip this, make some money and help pay for my trip and I get to bring up all the stuff I want to bring anyway. So it's a win-win. So that also means I don't have to sacrifice any space in the back bed of my truck for all my safety gear and my extra tires and my gas and everything else. So let me show you some of the tools and things I'm gonna bring that'll just give me peace of mind, even though I may never use them. I'm gonna be glad I've got access to tools and safety gear right here in the back of my trailer. So you can see here, I've got all kinds of tools that I'm gonna be bringing up, um, anything that I could possibly need. But this bag here is kind of like my safety bag. This is like, a, it's a safety light. So it, it could just stick on the back of your vehicle or anywhere else. And flares, you know, only last a certain amount of time. So having some other kind of light might be really good in case you get an emergency on the road. I do also have traditional flares. I've got jumper cables. I've got a small first aid kit by my favorite first aid company, Survivewear. And I also have a tire plug kit. That way, if you get a big old hole, you can repair it right there on the side of the road. And then with your pump, you can get your tire back in business and be good to go. So every day before I start, I do a visual inspection, walk around of the truck, check the tires, check the connections, make sure everything's looking good, and then I hit the road. Check, make sure your pin is still there. Chains are hooked up good. I'm always checking my tires here. Hey, nobody. 
The other thing I really want to do first off is my windshield is so, so dirty. Get to a gas station and uh, clean that off and be really good. So I try to find us, <laughs> my Tim Hortons for the road. And then Withy and I, we'll split, we'll split some goodies. He likes Tim Hortons too. You like your Tim Hortons? Here you go. Put it by your carrot. He's a good boy. Mm, good morning, Canada. Oh dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful trip. This time I have to be on the road. And Lord, I just ask for travel mercies and thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this food. In Jesus' name, amen. I am start of day three, gone almost 1,300 miles, and today gonna be all planes probably. Probably get out of the planes late tonight. So big day, start of day three. Here we go. Other thing is you're gonna want to make sure that your vehicle has a good jack, and if it doesn't, you're gonna want to have a jack. Sometimes uh, those floor jacks are good, or you can rely on the jack that you have that came with your vehicle. But make sure you know how to use it. Um, it can be very difficult sometimes on the side of the road in inclement weather, on a busy highway. It's not the time to figure that out. You need to figure out your tire changing equipment way before you hit the road for this long trip. One thing to be aware of is a lot of the modern vehicles now, the tire is up underneath the vehicle. And sometimes that tire has not been accessed in a really long time. It might be it might be rusted up in there. It might be gunked up somehow. You're going to really want to figure out how you can access that tire. And for, for instance, my truck, um, this is how you access the tire. The tire is sitting right here and you need the key of the vehicle to unlock that. This pulls out. So then I would get out the part of my jack, extend it. You're going to have to let this tire down, pull the tire out and thread the tire rim through this little catchment and uh, then you'll be able to access your tire. But it's a pain in the butt, no, no doubt about it. And that is how you access the tire underneath. Now a lot of times, maybe it's only a donut up under there. You really need to know what you're dealing with. You also need to know that that tire is properly inflated. Last thing you wanna do is go to use it and it's flat. So inspect that tire practice on doing it. Unless you're like me, I'm going to be taking that extra spare tire in the back of my trailer that I can just grab and throw on if I need to. So think about those things way far in advance of your trip. You'll be glad you did. You're also definitely going to want a really good four-way to change your tires. So I took a back road to go north from the Trans-Canada Highway heading over to the Yellowknife Highway. And I'm just smack in the middle of the Canadian Plains, which I love way better than the American Plains. And uh, it's just epic, wide open landscape. And I love these back roads where, you know, I'm the only one here. It's pretty great. So it is day three, middle of the day. It's 3.30. I'm just battling to stay awake. I mean, it's bad. It's just the plains and it's sunny and windy and I'm fighting it. So I just stopped and I got a vitamin water, um, energy, a little caffeine. I don't drink caffeine, so I don't want to go crazy on caffeine. I do need to wake up, but it's so, I'm so tired. <laughs> so what happens on the road trips. I just, it's so hard to stay awake sometimes. Everything's going okay. We've gone, I don't know, almost 1600 miles. So Cranking, we're cranking. It's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's probably gusting 40, 50 miles an hour out there. It's just insane. Luckily, I've been going with the wind. It's kind of like you get that extra push. My buddy. He's quite the travel buddy, aren't you? We've stopped a lot, had some good walks. Yeah. I'd trade spots with you right now. I could go to sleep in that seat. Look at 
see the cemetery. It's just in the middle of this field, basically. And there's nothing. Gotta bury people somewhere. The other thing you're gonna wanna do before you go is get a good oil change, get all your fluids checked. Just make sure everything checks out. Drive a vehicle, you already know, that's a good plan too. Now when it comes to pulling a trailer, make sure you have some experience doing that. So you know how to properly hook up a trailer. Make sure you've got all your pins in place. Make sure everything is super secure before you take off. You're also gonna want to have an extra uh, pin or two with you in case you lose one. And if you will be pulling a trailer, make sure that your vehicle has mirrors wide enough out there so you can see behind you. Make sure your vehicle is adequately powered to pull something and make sure you can see everything around it. If you don't have much experience pulling a trailer, um, take some time to learn how to do it, how to hook up the hitch, how to unhook it and get comfortable with it. It's really not that hard and it may pay off once you get to Alaska. There's the Alaska Highway, here we go. I'm in Dawson Creek, start of the Alaska Highway. All right, so I am 400 miles into day four, which means my trip total is now 2,400 miles. I'm a little more than halfway, but I am officially on the Alaska Highway. Yes! Scenery's gonna get a lot better from here. I'm at Dawson Creek heading northwest. One of the more fun parts of the trip is seeing all the wildlife uh, runs a gamut and it's always a pleasure to just see animals along the side of the road, especially as you get farther north. All right, here's the first bear of the trip. Hi, buddy. Moose is being a good boy, it's his first bear. The sun just came out. It's been rainy. We just crossed the road. So far, two coyotes, one black bear. Right now, I'm just past uh, Bucking Horse River. So I just saw a coyote and I just saw another bear with a cub, another black bear. It's nine o'clock at night, although it's quite bright. We're getting farther north. It's going to be 24 hours of daylight as we go. So pretty cool. Early morning and late nights when to, when to drive. Bear number four for the night. A little bit bigger. Look at this guy, he's got, he's got grass sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> Moose just growled. It's okay, buddy. Good boy. All good. I do like to travel with a little bit of Canadian money just to have a little bit of cash on hand, but your debit card will work just fine if you're traveling from the U.S. If you're a U.S. citizen, you're going to get the currency exchange rate uh, automatically on your debit card. So you really don't need to worry about it. You know, it's going to do that automatically for you. At the time of my trip right now, one American dollar is worth a dollar twenty-eight Canadian. So I'm a little bit ahead with my dollar on this trip. All right, it's day five. <laughs> day five. Uh, I should be there tomorrow night. I've got two more days of driving to go. I've been averaging around 700, so that puts me about six days to get there. I had a good drive last night, expecting a great couple of days. This is the most beautiful part of the trip. Um, looking to see some bison today on the road and other wildlife. Better start than yesterday, it's 8.30 in the morning. I, I'm doing okay because I keep gaining an hour as I go west and north, which is awesome. It gives me a little more time. All is well. We are gassed up, coffeeed up with Tim Hortons. Oh 
Mr. Puppy has settled in. He already got muddy this morning. So yeah, I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for the moment. Moose is doing good. He's been a great traveling buddy. One of the things you're gonna encounter on the Alaska Highway is definitely construction. And you never know how long it's gonna be or how bad it's gonna be. I've seen some really, really bad construction zones you have to drive through. These are straight up rocks on the road. This is pretty typical of a construction zone on the Alaska Highway, like big rocks in the road and you're just kind of <laughs> making your way through. This is actually one of the better ones, but uh, I'd hate to be on a motorcycle and there is a guy behind me on a motorcycle. It would be really bad. There's certain places that are just so stunningly beautiful. You should absolutely stop and soak it up. Luani and Destruction Bay and Liard Hot Springs is a great place to just stop and soak your bones. You shouldn't miss that one. This is Summit Lake, just a absolutely beautiful spot to drive through. And uh, what a bluebird day. This is, this is great. Not a ton of traffic, but I, I imagine it's because of all of the, you know, the high gas prices and stuff. So it's been pretty good so far. Look at that. Good stuff. Gas is expensive. There's no way around it. It's more expensive than in the States. So be ready to put down a big chunk of change if you're going to be driving. But again, that's the reason I'm going to try to pull this trailer and flip it when I get there. So make sure and stop and enjoy the trip. Get some Tim Hortons from Canada, fuel up with some caffeine, and you'll be all set. Watch this as I go by. Hey, buddies. <laughs> you gotta love that. Look at the scenery. Those are the Stone Mountain sheep. They're always here. Can you even imagine driving you know the big trucks through here and they do it all, I mean all the time these big trucks come through here and it, it is scary I couldn't even imagine doing this in the winter we've done it when it has been sketchy Dave definitely has done it and he's had to pull over up here at the top but uh yeah truckers come through here all the time and they're just squeezed and they squeeze you so there's one up ahead of me right now recommendation is to get gas once you start getting farther north I tend to stop and get gas at, at any major place that has gas just to ensure that I will always have um, not less than half of a tank just in case because I'll tell you what over the years I've watched so many service stations and rest stops and gas stations close um, you, you count on them being there and then so you push it a little farther to get gas and then they might be closed. And it might be the only game in town or the only game in that area. So get gas. I, I like to try to just keep my tank over half full all through the trip. Even if it means stopping a little bit more, gives me peace of mind. So that's something to think about. Look at this guy. Stone Mountain Sheep. Did you see that one? landscape. It's a beauty. It's Moosey's first buffalo.
One of the very few spots in the world you can still see wild buffalo. It's so cool. Without fail, they're here all the time. It's like, what the heck was that? Those are buffaloes, dude. Pretty cool. <laughs> there we go. The other thing to think about is rest stops. A lot of rest stops are gonna be outhouses. A lot of rest stops are gonna be gas station stops. Again, depending on the time of day or night you're traveling, they could be open, they could be closed. Uh, there was a couple campgrounds I usually stop at, they were closed. That's where the sawdust toilet just saves the day. I'll tell you the one thing I really appreciate on a trip like this is having my sawdust toilet in the back of the truck here with my little camping spot because there's a lot of places, there's just nowhere to go. And uh, yeah, you can go in the woods, that's fine too, but uh, skeeters are pretty bad. So yeah, I can just pull over, use my sawdust toilet, it's pretty great. And definitely when you're getting tired, get off the road. It's just not worth pushing it when you're too tired. All right, morning of day six. Today, I make it home. Yes! So I got about 650 miles to go. No problem. It's going to be uh, wide open roads, straight stretches, and uh, beautiful views. I am going to be so glad to be off the road. So is Lucy. We've had enough. <laughs> We've had enough sitting. Almost there. Head to Haines Junction, Canada right now. I'm in Yukon Territory, which is just my favorite. It is absolutely a gorgeous morning. Woke up to 45 degrees, which is perfect camping weather. And uh, yeah, it's all good. So there's a grizz just walking along the side of the road right here, which is pretty sweet. First grizz on the Alaska Highway. You can go there. to driving the Alaska Highway a lot of people still think it's going to be just super rough and, and dirt roads and and that's not true it's you it's it's actually a really nice road these days but there can be really really rough sections so the thing about oh gosh this stretch this road was built through permafrost which is just this you know what you see here this black spruce uh, and so this permanently frozen ground, just the roads just, you know, destroyed all the time. <laughs> so you just have to go really slow through some sections. And, and that's because of the extreme temperatures from summer to winter. Heaves and buckles is notoriously bad. It just really <laughs> throws you around. And then the turn some of it into gravel. And you just gotta go slow. Take your time. Look at this guy. <laughs> totally jumping on my lap to get more comfortable all the time. Welcome to Alaska sign. get out of this truck. Yes, but first we have more frost heaves to deal with. Yes, yes, yes. I am on my road home. We have like a quarter mile to go. And our 3,915 mile journey will be over. And I'm ready for it to be over. Six straight days on the road. Here we are, buddy. We're home. You made it. I made it. Oh. Did you lose the dog? Oh, he's right there. Oh, there he is. Oh. Wow, skeeters are bad. Yes, they are. Holy cow. 
Well guys, hope you liked this video and enjoyed it. Hope you're inspired to drive to Alaska. It's a great trip. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. This is Girl in the Woods. She gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.